Magic 17 and new in California, working in bursting sweet vineyards, hot sand on sole, one strap held by a safety pin. A girl could be whatever she desired, the first breath of Eve in paradise, the last gasp of Jean Harlow in Hollywood. I was heartbroken when I heard it. She was only 26 years old. I would have daydreams or illusions or something, and uh, one of them was uh, I wondered if I could fit into Jean Harlow's clothes, even if Mama would allow it, which I knew she wouldn't. <laughs> so is that 17-year-old girl you? Oh, of course. Of course, I was, I was picking grapes in my uncle's vineyard. You bet. There's nothing in here that is fake or false. Mm. You would not believe the people who have published my writing. I have to say that I have been in, in some, uh, some other than your, your ladies' home journals. I've never approached them either because I knew pretty, pretty well what, <laughs> I knew pretty well what the answer would be. <laughs> oh, good lady with purple hair, pouring tea from a silver pot, you have figured me all wrong from the moment someone said that fatal word, poet. You tell me that writing poetry must be a nice little hobby that one can take up and put down whenever one feels like it. Fine lady in good social standing, wearing a strand of pearls, please give me another eclair to close my angry mouth before I say there is no place where a poet can put it down, kiss it off, and just walk away. To suddenly encounter a writer who was writing from a different level of experience with the same verb and the same originality and the same craft, but who was not dependent upon allusions to other poetry, for example, or to the resonance of, of the classics. Rather, she was dependent on the resonance of Kmart. My Kmart bench companion, fresh-faced and jello fat, she wore a yellow jersey dress and hugged a bag of popcorn to her bosom as she would a baby, smiled at me when I sat down beside her, started talking. My doctor would throw a hissy if he saw me eating all this salt and butter. Funny thing is, I could pass on by the popcorn machine if I didn't have to smell the stuff. What I think Wilma McDaniel does is that she reminds us that we might be on that bench at Kmart, or some part of us is on that bench at Kmart. And we may have in some fashion or another, without thinking about it, separated ourselves from that. Those people, we might say. Well, you know, those people in the valley, um, those homeless people. Wilma reminds us that that's us.